Lesson 5.6, Divide Decimals with Decimal Divisors. When we divide a decimal by another decimal, we can multiply both the divisor and the dividend by the same power of 10 to make the divisor a whole number. We multiply 2 and 5 tenths times 10, we make it into a 25. And we multiply the dividend by the same power of 10 times 10, we make it a 75. We multiply both by 10 to move the decimal point one hop to the right. When we multiply both the divisor and the dividend by the same power of 10, the quotient stays the same. Here we have our dividends, our divisors, and our quotients. If we have 8 divided by 4, that's equal to 2. And if we have 80 divided by 40, that's equal to 2. And if we have 800 divided by 400, that's equal to 2. Here, we have 8 times 10 to the first power divided by 4 times 10 to the first power. That's the 80 divided by 40. And if we have 8 times 10 to the second power, that's 8 times 100, divided by 4 times 10 to the second power, that's 4 times 100, we still get 2. The divisor and the dividend are multiplied by the same power of 10. This works for whole numbers as well as decimals. We have our dividend, our divisor, and our quotient. If our dividend is 3 and 6 tenths and we divide it by 9 tenths, it's equal to 4. If we multiply the dividend and the divisor by a power of 10, that would be times 10, we have 36 divided by 9, that's equal to 4. And if we multiply this dividend and divisor both by 10 to the second power, that would be 100, we would have 360 divided by 90, that's equal to 4. So remember the exponent, the little number up here, tells us how many factors of 10 to use. We have 10 to the 0 power, that's just equal to 1 because we have 0 factors of 10, it's just a 1. 10 to the first power means we just have 1 10. 10 to the second power means we have two factors, 10 times 10, that's 100. And 10 to the third power means we have three factors of 10, that's 1,000. And it's also the amount of zeros written after the 1. We have no zeros written after the 1. We have one zero. We have two zeros. We have three zeros. See the pattern? Here we have 3 and 6 tenths divided by 9 tenths. We can multiply 3 6 times 10 and make it a 36, and 9 tenths times 10, and make it a 9, 36 divided by 9 is equal to 4. We have 9 tenths here as our divisor. We have 3 and 6 tenths as our dividend. We can see that 9 fits into 36 four times. We moved the decimal point one hop to the right by multiplying it by 10, so the dividend moved one hop to the right. And our decimal point is going to go straight up here, so our quotient is a 4. We do not multiply the quotient by a power of 10, only the divisor and the dividend. Here we have 42 hundredths divided by 7 hundredths. We can multiply the 42 hundredths times 100 and make it a 42. We can multiply the 7 hundredths times 100 and make it a 7, and 42 divided by 7 is equal to 6. Our quotient is a 6. By multiplying the divisor and dividend by 100, we move the decimal point two hops to the right, it became a 7, and then we move this two hops to the right, and it became a 42. When we multiply a decimal divisor and a decimal dividend by the same power of 10, we change their values, but the relationship between them stays the same. Their decimal points must hop in the same direction for the same amount of place values. We have 1 and 2 tenths divided by 6 tenths. We multiply them both times 10. That's 1 hop, and that's 1 hop. If we have 12 hundredths divided by 6 hundredths, we multiply them both by 100. That's two hops, so that's two hops. We only need to multiply a decimal divisor by a power of 10 
great enough to change it to a whole number. Sometimes this will change the dividend to a whole number. Sometimes it won't. This depends on the amount of hops the divisor needs to be a whole number. It all depends on the divisor, the number of hops we're going to take, how much we're going to multiply them by. We have 1 and 8 tenths. We need to only move it one hop, so we're going to multiply it by 10. That's going to force the dividend to be multiplied by 10. Our new decimal point position will be here. The dividend becomes a whole number. Here we have 18 hundredths. We need to make it move two hops to the right to make it a whole number. That means we're going to multiply it by 100, so the dividend is going to be multiplied by 100. And the dividend becomes a whole number, 162. And the decimal point goes directly above the new decimal spot, see? Here, we have 7 tenths, and we're trying to fit it into 63 hundredths. We only need to move it one hop to the right, so that's times 10. So we're going to multiply the dividend times 10, but it doesn't become a whole number. It becomes 6 and 3 tenths. Our new decimal point position is going to be in between the 6 and the 3, which means for the quotient, it's going to go straight above here. The decimal point for the quotient will be placed directly above the new decimal point position in the dividend. We have 36 hundredths divided by 9 tenths. It only needs one hop to become a whole number, so that's times 10. Therefore, the dividend is multiplied times 10. That's going to move the decimal point from here, one hop, to in between the 3 and the 6. So for the quotient, it's going to go directly above this new position to here. Here we have 9 hundredths. It needs to move two hops to the right, so it needs to be multiplied times 100. That means for the dividend, it needs to be multiplied by 100. It's going to go one, two hops in between the 3 and the 6. The new position for the decimal point for the quotient is going to be in between the 3 and the 6, straight above, right here. And remember, we can use multiplication to check if we have the correct quotient. Our quotient times the divisor is going to equal the dividend. Multiplication is the inverse of division, so we can use it to check our quotient. We have 1 and 2 tenths divided by 6 tenths. It needs to go one hop to become a whole number, so that's times 10. We multiply this times 10, and it becomes a 12. 6 fits into 12 two times. And 6 times 2 is 12, so we know we have the right quotient. We could even do 6 tenths times 2, and it is equal to 1 and 2 tenths. Now, we learned how to do long division with one-digit or two-digit divisors back in videos 2.2 through 2.6, and they're linked in the description if you missed them and you're having trouble with long division. We see this is 17 hundredths. To make the 17 a whole number, it's going to have to go two decimal hops to the right. So we're going to have to multiply it times 100, which means the dividend will have to be multiplied times 100. Our decimal point is going to go directly above the new location right here. And we think 17 cannot fit into 7, so we fit 17 into 73. We can think of this as a 20, and the 73 is an 80. 80 divided by 20 is 4, and 17 times 4 is 68. We can't fit another 17 into this to subtract it, so 4 would be a good partial quotient. 17 times 4 is 68. We subtract it. 73 minus 68 is 5, and now it's the 1's turn to come down. And 17 times 3 is equal to 51, so we know we can put a 3 up here. We can do a little multiplication on the side if we're confused about how many times it'll fit in. We do 17 times 3 is 51, and we subtract it and get a 0 remainder. We know the quotient is 43. Emma paid a dollar and 44 cents for bananas and $4.34 for oranges at Mr. Lee's store. 
what is the total number of items she bought. We can see it's giving us a table and bananas are 24 cents each, lemons are 54 cents, oranges are 62 cents, and pears are 78 cents. We see some unnecessary information in the table. It's asking about oranges and bananas, not lemons or pears, so we can ignore that information. And we can divide $1.44 by the 24 cents for the bananas to know how many bananas she bought. She spent $1.44 for bananas. We can divide $1.44 by the 24 cents for each banana. And we can also divide the $4.34 for the oranges by the price of one orange. We move the decimal point two hops to the right by multiplying it by 100, which means the dividend is forced to be multiplied by 100 and have its decimal point move two hops to the right. So our decimal point's going to go right up here. And we can think 25 fits into 150. 24 times 6 is 144. We have a remainder of 0. We can see she bought 6 bananas. We move the decimal point two hops in the 62 cents. That forces the dividend to have its decimal move two hops. And 62, we can think of 60 fits into 420 as 6 fits into 42. 62 times 7 is equal to 434, and we see that she got 7 oranges. So 6 bananas and 7 oranges, that's 13 items she bought from Mr. Lee's store. To solve this problem, we had to divide the dollar amount by the price of the bananas and get a quotient, then divide the dollar amount by the price of the oranges to get a quotient, and then we needed to add them together to find out how many items she bought. Mrs. Kim baked 12 pounds of cookies. She put 66 hundredths pounds of cookies on a plate for free samples and puts the rest in boxes to sell. If each box holds 81 hundredths pounds, how many boxes can she fill to sell? So we think we need to subtract the sample amount first because she didn't box those, she put those on a plate. So we have 12 pounds and we can add a decimal point and trailing zeros here so that we could subtract 66 hundredths and we get 11 and 34 hundredths is the amount she put into boxes. Because she put 81 hundredths into each box, we divide 11 and 34 hundredths by 81 hundredths. The 81 hundredths needs two decimal hops to the right to become a whole number, so we need to multiply it by 100, which forces this one to be multiplied by 100. Our new decimal point is going to go directly up here. And we can think 320 divided by 80 We have 81 cannot fit into 1, 81 cannot fit into 11, but 81 can fit into 113 one time. And 81 times 1 is 81. We subtract it and get a 32. And now it's the 4's turn to come down. And we think we're trying to fit 81 into 324. We can think 320 divided by 80 or 32 divided by 8. That's a 4. And 81 times 4 is 324, and we get a remainder of 0. We can check 81 times 14, do the multiplication, we get 1,134, which is the amount of our dividend, so we know we have the correct quotient. We know Mrs. Kim can fill 14 boxes. One of the biggest mistakes students make when they do math is they get their place values mixed up. So remember that you can turn a sheet of lined paper sideways to keep your place values in their correct column. And you can click on the description to see the link to PayPal or Patreon to help support my dogs and me for all our efforts to help you. Our next lesson, 5.7, we're going to learn to write a zero in the dividend. 
when we're dividing and the dividend isn't large enough. I hope I'll see you there, and I hope you have a wonderful day. Bye.